And we're going to go straight to the calls, Mick, because yep. we knew that we would get yeah. a lot on yeah. this. And, and we're starting with uh, Paula. Hello, Paula. Hello, Ruth. Hi there. Um, you say you've had cerebral palsy since you were born. Um, yes, and you're right. worried you're going to lose your car, is that right? Yes, that's right. So tell us about that. Um, basically, I've had the D DLA component of um, motability since 1979. My parents had to fight for it. Mm -hmm. And I've had a new car through the government every three years up until this point, And I actually have to use my benefits to pay for that car. So it's not why, have, why have they suddenly stopped providing the car for you then? Because the DLA... The DLA benefit has swapped to PIP, and they're reassessing every single disabled person who's on motability for PIP, and the criteria has got harder to pass in order to keep vehicles. And how often do you use and need your car? Every single day to go to work. I'm a single parent, I'm a teacher. I have to drive 25 mile radius of where I live, but sometimes go to different schools that I do supply teaching at. So my up. car is absolutely vital. Yeah. Obviously, you sound very upset, Paula. What can I mean, you do, is, Mick? Well, I mean, this is one of the uh, current things that lots of people like me are fighting, the change in the way that the benefits are assessed. Because, I mean, what motability um, and the mobility component of what was DLA and that's now PIP basically was there for was because most public transport... What's DLA? Disability Living Allowance, right. and it's become Personal Independence Payment. Right. And they're reassessing everyone, and they're saying... What it used to be was if you couldn't walk 50 metres... If you could walk... So, if you had trouble walking up to 50 mm. metres, they'd say, right, OK, fine, you get the benefit. They've now lessened that to 20. Now, where I live, 20 metres is basically how far you'd probably have to walk from my front door to the front of the building that I live in. Mm. So you wouldn't actually be able to get outside even if you could walk 20 metres. Yeah. Mm. And this is... Un and also, don't forget that this is... Uh, so you can walk for 20 metres. Mm. What do you do when you want to go back? Yeah. Because you're stuck, because you can only walk 20 metres. So actually, you can only walk 10, because you've got to go back yeah. again. Um, and lots of people, like Paula, are finding themselves where they fall foul of this reassessment. They lose the what's called mobility component, which then means that they then lose their car, which then means they can't get they to can't work, get which then means they then fall into the need of actually claiting it benefits. Just make sense. It doesn't make sense. And this is one of the things that we've been saying for ages, that the, the changes in the way the benefit system has been structured over the last government and a bit um, make no sense. They have targeted the very wrong people. The fraud and all that, fine. But this is this, you know, Paula is disabled. The car she gets makes it so that she can go to work. So what can she do? Well, fight it is the answer. Contact people like Disability Rights UK. Um, quest uh, there's a whole appeals process that you can go through. Make sure you do that. And as yes, we are doing now, highlight it. Oh, what's that? What, Paula? I, I am actually in the process of appealing, and I'm going to um, MP. And I'm writing my case because I actually can can only walk for 10 metres um, yeah, without being in severe pain all the time. Yeah. I had an assessment in my own home. They came to my own home to assess me. How can they possibly know whether I can walk 20 metres or more to take my car away? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, think is... the, the, the discrimination against that poor guy going up the stairs yeah. is absolutely yeah. disgusting. I'm so sorry. You're obviously really upset, quite understandably. Oh, yeah. And uh, like you said, you know, Paula could just say, well, I'll just stay at home and not work, but she wants to work. Exactly. She's yeah, a yeah. parent. I've fought so you... hard to become a teacher. There's already discrimination against us. Yeah, OK, well... I've worked hard to become a teacher and there's already discrimination against us in the workplace as it is. I always have to prove myself ten times more than anybody else. I know, it's just, it's just a vicious like. circle, Paula. It, well, it, you've got it, your it really story is. on the telly now. Make sure that everyone, you know, tweet this, tell everyone about it. And every, all the disabled community are behind you, and I bet you all the public are behind you as well, because this mm. is something this government has to wake up to. But it the is. public have changed. They don't, they don't believe this myth that we're all scroungers anymore. Mm. They want us to get help. And this, you're the, exactly the kind of person that, that they want to help. So, Paula, keep I think you'll have it. a lot of support on yeah. that one, Paula, and we wish don't you well with it. Yeah, I'm sorry, we, we need to get some other calls in, but really good luck with good that. Good luck with everything, and let us Paula. know what, <coughs> what happens.